Salutations, ape friends. My name is Owen Kirby, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple monophonic synthesizer in Touch Designer. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. So, when I like to make components, I like to think about, okay, well, how, how can I conceptualize this component as like a single tool? Like, it does one thing, and uh, so I usually get started by just dropping the bass. Get your bass comp, drop it, blam, then you think, well, what am I making here? And name it right away. So here I am making a simple synth, but I'm making another one. So this one will be numbered one. And uh, what do I want it to do? Well, I want it to take input directly from a MIDI in chop and output the audio as you do with a regular synth. So we're going to go right in there and put in the first, first things. You got the in and you got the out. Okay, and it's the uh, stuff in between that's important. So, which are th what are the basic constituents of an analog synth? Well, the most important one is the oscillator, which is the sound generating circuit. Um, so here we've got an audio oscillator, and it makes uh, you know cyclical patterns, but at an audio rate. So here we got a sine tone, and if you just let it be, it only makes a constant tone. So now the point of a synthesizer is that you take this raw harmonic information, and you filter it to change the timbral qualities of the sound. So audio filter, bim bam. Here with a low pass filter, so you go from a darker sound to a brighter sound. And you also do the same thing with the amplitude of the sound. Of course, as with any sound in nature, these things vary over time, and that's the purpose of the envelope generator here, uh, reproduced in the form of the trigger chop, also commonly known as an ADSR. So I'm going to show you. So here's your ADSR, and you've got normally four stages here in Touch Center. We have five stages. Um, so the first stage is the attack stage. So picture this graph as value, whoops, value over time. And uh, what will get it going will be a trigger input. So once the trigger starts, bam. Okay, you've got all this time to go up to the value of one, which is the peak value. This is the attack portion. And you can see that I can lengthen it or shorten it. The second stage, which is uh, kind of unique to Touch Center, other more esoteric modules have this, but the, there's a peak a level with a peak length, which is uh, kind of all right. I haven't found too many musical uses for it, but um, it's it's useful. So peak length for music zero. Then you go down the decay stage. So once it reaches the peak, the sound well, the envelope decays to the sustain portion. Sustain portion is the level that will be maintained as long as the trigger signal is above zero. And then once it goes back to zero, you've got the release length. Okay, so we're going to put it back in non-time slice mode. And we know for sure that we want something from the outside for our MIDI channels going into the input of this. But what could it be? What happens when you plug in the MIDI chop directly in? There's a lot of channels in there. Okay, well, you get 
a whole bunch of trigger channels. And since here we're only concerned with making a monophonic synthesizer, we really only want there to be a single channel, otherwise it will cost too much in terms of CPU usage. So we're going to go ahead and select only the note information channels, because from the raw MIDI feed you'll also get control information, aftertouch, etc. So we're going to do here channel 1, and for note, and all of them, little star for all of them. And so we're still getting all of them, but we're not getting any of the um, MIDI control information. So what we're going to do is we're going to math them up, find channels, add, and we're only getting one. Okay, cool. So we want this to combine the amplitude, to control the amplitude of the sound over time. So we're going to combine the chops by multiplying them together. somewhere. Now you may notice that there's some like stepping sound to to the sound itself. Little clicks. And the reason for that is that uh, we're matching two different sample rates together and inevitably to fill up the amount of samples that um, that isn't present in the modulation channel you'll get a step where that's empty. So here you got you know regular baseline uh, 44.1 kilohertz and here you've got for audio, and here you've got the session uh, sample rate of 60 hertz. So right in the trigger chop, you've got an option to specify the rate, and I will do just that, and I will specify it to 44.1 kilohertz. Much better. Also, I'll have a All right, you can do the same thing to the audio filter. So the second input of the audio filter is really what you want to be using to modulate this in real time because uh, it accepts a higher sample rate inputs, whereas modulating from, from an export will limit you to 60, um, 60 hertz. Okay, so that's cool but I want I want to be able to play melodies I want to be musical with it so the first input of the audio oscillator in deals with pitch control and right here we can see what happens and go from zero to one okay so I'm gonna want some forms of values coming in that correspond to the pitch normally you've got MIDI note numbers right and that it's taken care of internally to your synth, and you don't worry about it. You send the mini note number, and it hits up the right pitch. But here we've got them. The values we're getting are velocity values, and the note numbers are in the names. So we're going to have to... Well, the way I do it is a pretty easy little chop execute trick. So we're going to take a null, because that keeps stuff clean and organized, and it's good practice. Chop execute. and a constant, which I will name notes, so that we know what's going on. So, And so I want this chop execute to every time a note comes on, send me the note number stored in the name to the value zero here. So we're gonna go in and type op, this operator notes, dot parameter dot value zero equals cha whoa uh, there we go sorry about that dot channel dot name but that's not going to work because we need because uh, values takes integer and float values and here we've got a string so we're going to want to slice that up and you can see here ch1n that's four digits that uh, we're going to want to slice out. So I'm going to make sure Python knows this string. I'm going to slice it up to four and then make that an integer. Let's see if that works. Cool. But 
as we've seen before, get an octave range out of 0 to 1. So 13, 4. This is going to be pretty out of range. Yeah, don't want that. So we're going to want to scale that back into a reasonable range. We're going to do that by dropping in a math and send the range 1 to 13, which is an octave, right? Split up in uh, the semitones to 0 to 1. And there we go. We're playing notes, and we're really close to uh, getting some synth synth action going on. But this sounds a bit static, and so a lot of times synthesizers will feature what's called an LFO, which stands for a low frequency oscillator, oscillator, which is used to modulate um, elements of the sound in a cyclical fashion over time. So uh, here we've got a sine wave LFO going, and you can hear what that does to the pitch. It's an effect called vibrato, which... Uh, Say, string instrument players use a lot to bend the pitch up and down and to give it some expressive quality. So we want to combine that. Well, we want to sort of dial that back a bit first, but all right. We want to add that also to the incoming notes. So we're going to add them together. It's already a bit livelier, but I want it to be even more expressive. So maybe we'll use some real-time input data, such as the pressure channels of my Launchpad Pro. CH1N pressure. And have that multiply the amount of modulation going to pitch. Exaggerate this a bit. And you can do the same thing to the filter. And these are some sort of classic synthesizer routings. Like when chops multiply. Or I'm going to add them, rather. And now, like, once again, you may hear that stepping, and that's something that's going to occur pretty often when you're working in, uh, with Audio and Touch Designer. But it's pretty easy to fix once you keep in mind that you got to pay attention to the sample rate. Okay. Okay, so that's our synth. Okay, um, let's just, just for fun, I'll put the pitch a bit lower. Okay, uh, so that's the synthesizer, but there's nothing going on here. So it'd be kind of nice to have all the important synthesizer options on the front page using custom components. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you real quick how to set that up. But, so I like to, for things like this, I like to organize them by pages and each page will be a different module of the synthesizer. So you could have one page, say LFO, LFO options, oscillator options, filter, filter options, etc. And uh, right now I'm just going to do a quick uh, basic oscillator type selection. So we're going to add a menu parameter. We're going to have, and for this synth, I'm going to keep it real simple. We're going to go triangle wave, square wave, and sawtooth. Okay, and there we go.
So next we're going to drop a parameter chop. And I like to keep these colored in uh, black just because that's how I like to do it. And it uh, helps me to remember that these are the parameter chops because I tend to use those a lot. And we're going to export this menu to the wave type parameter here. But you may notice triangle, sine, square, Gaussian, saw, triangle. So it doesn't match. So this happens pretty often when there are some waveforms that I want to ignore, such as Gaussian. Um, if anybody from Touch or anybody that knows why that waveform happens to be there, I'd like to know because it's, it's, it's a weird one. So I don't know why that's there, but sure, it's there. So we're going to skip those. We can only do those. And here's how I go about that. So we're going to set up a switch. First input is index and we've got three items in our menu. There's three constants. Add those over here. Constant one. So we want those to match. Constant one is triangle. I believe triangle is the second one in the list. And let's see. Does that match? Oops. Triangle, sure. Triangle, square. And sawtooth. And Basically, you go on until you have everything that you think is relevant to have up on the front page, and you start building your synthesizer that way. So the custom components um, part of setting up is pretty time-consuming, I'd say. But once you do it, it's really fun and goes a long way towards the reusability of your components. Uh, in the following tutorials, I'll probably end up showing you how to do well, how to make a polyphonic synthesizer, but also some cool options that rely a lot more on custom parameters. Um, off the top of my head, I'm trying to remember one. Oh yeah, um, sort of a modular approach to custom parameters, as in uh, populating menus and rerouting certain things in your network for optimization purposes. But this should get you started in thinking about making synths and instruments in TouchSigner. So, thanks for watching.